Okay, let's look at how we can solve some problems. Some problems that would involve integers. So let's look at this first one. Assume it costs you $40 per month for a smartphone plan. Question is, how much would you pay for three months? Well, if you're paying $40, $40 per month every month, and that's going to happen for three months, then this should be a multiplying question. We have $40 that you're going to have to pay, positive $40, times three months. So 40 times three is 120, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So you would owe $120 for your smartphone if you paid $40 a month for three months. And it's a good idea when you're solving problems to actually answer the question, how much would you pay for three months? You would pay $120. So you have your work that you're showing here, your math work, but you remember when it's a word problem, you're actually answering a question. How much would you pay for three months? you would pay $120. And you could write four or three months or whatever. Um, but we should always have a sentence when you're answering a word problem. Here's another question. If a submarine is going down in the water, so it's diving down in the water at 30 meters per minute, how deep would it be in five minutes? Well, dealing with integers, generally if things are going down, we would use negative to represent that, and if things are going up, we would call that positive. Just like on the number line, if we're going right, that's positive, and we're going left, that's negative. So generally, down or right is considered negative, and sorry, down and left is considered negative, and if we're going up or to the right, that's considered positive. So this submarine is going down, so the key word in here is down, that's going to imply negative. So it's going down in the water at 30 meters per minute. How deep would it be in five minutes? So I have negative 30 going down 30 meters per minute. And how many minutes are going by? Five minutes are going by. So negative 30 times five, I can go 30 times five, which is 150. And a negative times a positive is a negative. So how deep would it be in five minutes? We would write a sentence. It would be, you could write 150 meters down, or it would be at a depth of negative 150 meters. Don't forget units. Most word problems will have units in them. This question had um, meters for the depth. This last question we did had dollars for its units. So don't forget units. And remember, if things are going down or if something's going to the left, probably that'll be a negative scenario. And if things are going up or to the right, generally that'll be positive. So this was 30 meters per minute for five minutes. So 30 times five, 150 but negative because we're going down. The temperature rose from minus four, I was gonna put these little degree symbols in here. The temperature rose from minus four degrees Celsius this morning at seven in the morning to plus 11 degrees Celsius at noon. The question is, what was the average change in temperature per hour? So a little bit trickier, this one. Um, we've gone from negative 4 to plus 11. And so average change in temperature per hour. So we're looking, we need to know what the change in temperature was. So the change in the temperature was from negative 4 to positive 11. So if I go from negative 4 all the way up to positive 11, let's 
look this up on a number line here. Number lines are great little tools to help visualize things. I'm going to skip a few here up to 11. So the temperature was here at negative 4 and it went all the way up to positive 11. So looking at my number line here, from negative 4 to 0, if we just went to here, this is a distance of 4, obviously, from negative 4 to 0. And then from 0 to 11 is another 11 degrees. So this is a total of 4 plus 11. The change in temperature would be 15 degrees. So notice I'm not actually adding these together. I'm not going negative 4 plus 11. I, uh, to find the difference between them, what I could do is I could go 11 subtract negative 4. 11 minus minus 4 would be like 11 plus 4. And 11 plus 4 is 15. So uh, really good, especially when you have positives and negatives, to look on a number line from negative 4 to positive 11. And that would be 4 to get to 0 plus another 11 to get up to 11. So 4 plus 11 is 15. Or if you want to do it mathematically, we would take the temperature that we end up with and we would subtract the temperature that we started with. 11 minus minus 4 would be 11 plus 4. 11 plus 4, 15. So we now have found the change in temperature. The change in temperature was 15 degrees. From negative 4 to positive 11 was an increase in 15 degrees Celsius. 15 degrees C. Now we've got to find the average. So the average change in temperature would be the change in temperature divided by the time. So we know that the change in temperature was 15 degrees. How many hours did that take? Well, from 7 a.m. to noon, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's going to take 5 hours. So if it went 15 degrees in 5 hours, I can go 15 divided by 5 and get 3. So this is positive 15 for the change because the temperature went up and positive 5 hours from 7 till noon. So positive 15 divided by positive 5 would be 3 degrees Celsius per hour. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So what was the average change in temperature per hour? The average change was 3. So the average change in temperature was 3 degrees Celsius per hour. So I've got an answer to the question, and I've got the units worked out there. Let's look at one last example here. Let's say you have $100 in your savings. So you, you're the owner of $100, but you owe three of your friends $20 each. $20 each, this is. Uh, so you're going to have to give them $20 each, three of your friends, but you make $11 per hour working. If you work for eight hours in the week and paid off your friend's debt that week, the question is how much money would you have at the end of the week? So let's set the scenario up here. So right now we have positive $100. So positive, again, if, if you have some money, that's good. That's positive. Um, if you're owing three of your friends $20, that's going to be negative because we're going to have to give that up. But you're going to make $11 dollars per hour so we're going to be adding some more money to the account so we're going to start with hundred dollars and you got to give three of your friends twenty dollars so that's going to be a subtraction we're going to lose three times twenty dollars because you owe three of your friends twenty dollars but we're going to add we're going to make eleven dollars per hour and how many hours did we work? We're going to work 8 hours. So we're going to add 11 times 8. So this one's going to come, this one's like a, is a bad math question, really. We should be good now at, at writing this out and seeing our order of operations. So we don't have any brackets to do. That's done. There's no exponents in this question. Is there any division multiplication? 
Well, we don't have any division, but there's definitely some multiplication here. So I have 100. Then I have negative 3 times positive 20. Well, 3 times 20 is 60, and a negative times a positive is a negative. So that's negative 60. And now here I have 11 times 8, positive times a positive. 11 times 8 is 88. So doing the multiplication from left to right, I get this expression now. 100 minus 60, 3 times 20, 60, plus 11 times 8, 88. But our division and multiplication now is all done. So now we can do our adding and subtracting from left to right. So if I go 100 minus 60, once we've paid our friends off, we would have $40 left in our savings. Um, but now we've done some work. So we're going to add the $88. And 40 plus 88 would be 128. So how much money would you have at the end of the week? You would have... $128. So I've got a sentence here uh, that answers the question. I've got my math work here showing how I found it, and I have my correct units. So there's how we can solve some word problems involving integers.